Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Coming up next, well guess what? Not all Magic Reserve list cards were created equal. We're going to talk about it tonight. It's coming up next. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. Hope you guys are ready to talk reserve list because guess what? As I said in the beginning, all cards are not created equal. As much as a reserve list exists, as much as uh, Wizards made some mistakes when they made this list, they didn't choose the best cards, they just chose cards. Some of them for obvious reasons, others seem ridiculous to even assume they picked them. So when you're a collector trying to find these cards and decide which ones are actually worth getting, these cards were not created equal. Some cards are more valuable than others. Some had larger print runs, some had shorter print runs. A lot of print runs we don't even know about because there's no definitive answer out there on the net. They stopped recording it and they wouldn't put the uh, print runs out for the public. So what I've done is I've gone through a few cards today just to kind of prove my point about which cards are the best of the best, which cards are not. Um, not all Power of Nine and stuff are on here, okay? It's not the whole point of it. It's to look beyond the obvious cards you might go for and to look for some of those rare, hard-to-find gems that haven't hit maximum effect yet, okay? So uh, the first card I want to start with tonight... Uh, it's going to fill the whole screen, so stay with me. Oh, and if you're new to the channel, please make sure you smash that subscribe button. As we approach the 2,000 subscriber mark, we are going to have a party. I can't wait to do it with you. So make sure you subscribe now. All right, there we got that part out of the way. Let's get on to this. All right. So right here, we're going to see Library of Alexandria. Now, what you see on the one side is the blacklist, and it shows all the cards for sale. Of course, I just chose a few off the, off the net that are the cheapest ones available that seem to have reliable buyers, okay? I don't choose ones that look weird or fluffy or ones that are going to be scams, okay? So on the other side, we see the sold listings. Now, there was one listing below this one, but it was a heavily inked card, and it went for about 600 bucks. and I still didn't like the seller's... Um, feedback of like 40 something so I didn't put it in this listing but I just want to prove the point they have one for 1259 one for 1227 one for 1268 the sale listings are 1097 1103 and 1213 you see now the ones that sold going back to October November and the ones that are being listed now at the most current dates um, you're seeing a slow lift in these cards Maybe only 10%, but it's still a 10% climb in a couple of months. It just proves the point that this card is selling well. Library of Alexandria is considered one of the power of 10 cards. Now, what I mean by a power of 10 card, it means the power of 9, of course, was the Moxes, the Lotus, and then all blue cards, which is hilarious. You got Ancestral Recall, Time Twister, and Time Walk. They are considered the power of 9. Now, the power of 10 are cards that they did not make that list, obviously, and that is cards like Library of Alexandria, Time Vault, um, some of those other kind of awesome cards that just, you know, at the time, they just didn't make that list for people. Now, when you look at that card, though, you see the listings of it. It's crazy to think. I remember buying one only a few years ago for like 150 bucks. This one here, I paid less than that, and that's going up, right? So you just see it climbing, okay? So pay attention. That card's kind of at a, at a high point right now. I'm not saying you should dive in and buy that card. I'm saying, look, though, it is an interesting card that people are buying. It is selling, okay? Let's go to number two. So number two, our Gibeon Archaeologist, of course, one of my favorites. Love this boy with his sneakers doing a little dig. Now you can see the ones again, 101, 121, 126 are the sold listings. The buy listings right now, people trying to sell are 139, 158, and 158. Now these are getting pretty close. It's a much smaller increase. Of course, this is a creature card with a great effect. Our Gibeon Archaeologist um, brings back artifacts. It's a mono tap guy. Uh, we used to always bring back the Chaos Orb back in the day. It was hilarious to do. But he's from Antiquities that only had what, it was 15 million, 20 million cards printed. So it's actually a very low print run. Now, I remember buying these uh, for 30 bucks, 15 bucks back in the day. Uh, and I'm talking like less than 10 years ago. And to see it climb to this level, where people are that honed in on it, it's crazy, okay? It's a very high-ranking card, but it's not out of your reach yet at 150 bucks. if you're going to look for a card that over time will continue to appreciate. It's a great one to have on the list. Now, number three. Now, here's a great one. This is a Fallen Empires card. This is the River Merfolk. He is a 2-1 that you can tap to give Mountain Walk to, uh, tap a, a blue mana. He is two casting for 2-1. He is on the reserve list. Do you notice I only have one listing showing? Because there's lots of people selling this card. There's only one person buying. 
So out of the 50, 60 cards on eBay right now, there was one person who bought one in the last few months. This is an example of a horrible reserve list card to buy. Nobody's buying that card. It is not selling. So do not invest money into these low level ones for five, six bucks and buy 50 copies. Yes, you could hope it drags up. You could force the market to go up, but nobody's buying it at that price, right? So you're just wasting money. Better to go for a card you know is selling. So before you buy cards and you're looking to see which ones might be the right one for you, you're gonna look at buy and sold listings. You're gonna check other websites to get a good across the board you know, feel of how that card is doing, okay? If it is a card not being played in any format, any decks, any you know, anything, nobody wants it, okay? These cards are not all meant to be on the reserve list. They just kind of put them on, okay? Um, I I laugh at cards like that. It, it's not a horrible card. It's a two one for two. You could give a mountain walk. Like it has multiple effects. Cool, but nobody's out there trying to buy up River Merfolk. You know what I'm saying? So let's go on to number four. Now number four. All right, Spoils of War. Right now, this one actually is selling, and it is an Ice Age card. It's an older card, but you can see four, five, six bucks each. It's still selling for around that. The shipping kind of makes it a little bit variable. You look for the lower shippings, right? But this uh, this card did have lots of, of cells, and it isn't a horrible card. You gain life based on what creatures and artifacts are in people's graveyards, and it was a three casting cost. It's not a horrible card, okay? It's not. But there's a lot of printings done for Ice Age. It's a massive print run. I think it's 500 million cards, so it's as big as any set nowadays. Um, but, but... It's still, cards have been lost to attrition over the last 25 years that set came out. So you're going to see there's quite a, a depreciation of what's available on the market, which will eventually force cards like that higher. It is a usable card. It's not a godly card. Again, I'm trying to prove the point to you that not all, all cards are like created equal in the reserve list. You got to pick your winners and losers. Cards like that could go up. It already is five, six bucks, which means people are playing with it versus that River Mof Merfolk for a dollar. All right. Number five. Now, number five, Lion's Eye Diamond. Now, you can see here the sold listings are 250, 328, 323. The buy listings of people trying to sell are 387, 412, 412. Now, for years, nobody could even figure out how to use Lion's Eye Diamond. We all laughed at it. None of us used it. None of my buddies, none of my play friends. It does have uses. It just took other cards to come along to make it useful, making it the price range it is now, and it is reserve list. But you can get a BGS 9.5 rated with some tens in that in that sub subcategory on the BGS for like 1,200 bucks. So you really can still buy this card if you have a few bucks to spend. Um, it's not out of your reach yet, but it will be there eventually. There's only so many out there. There's only so many Mirage cards out there. But this may not be the card for you to dive right into because of the fact that it is already at a $500 price mark in some cases, unless you can find a slightly beat up played copy, moderate played or a heavy played one that is affordable, okay? And you can always keep your eyes out for these cards, but you have to check constantly. So better just to watch me and have me do it for you, right? I'm gonna give you warnings when I see cards that could be appreciating or cards I think are worth it, okay? All right, oh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Let's go to number six. Now, number six. These are not just regular moxes. These are collector edition. Collector edition was a set of series of cards, all the gold backs that Wizards put out as kind of like an homage to, to people who just wanted to play the cards and have fun with them. Uh, there was 5,000 printed, I believe, of one with an extra couple thousand sets of the international edition. So in some ways, this is much rarer than most of the other Magic sets. Now, the lack of, uh, of product for people to play in Vintage Legacy have let some stores and some people to allow you to use these now inside the sleeves. Now you can see your sold listings, like that was a BGS 7.5, uh, and it's got a uh, thousand thirteen bucks. The other ones are seven eight hundred. There's one that was a thousand bucks. But look at the sell listings. Seven eighty six, right, with five bids going on. That one's a bid one. The other one's sixteen hundred dollars. And the other one is fifteen hundred. Collector edition are drying up. Okay, they're at a high point. There's not much left on the market. People who do have them have already rated them and are selling for a premium. Very, very hard to get, which brings me to a very interesting one I want to show you guys, okay? To end things off, I want to show you this card, and we're going to laugh together, okay? All right. This is the Collector Edition Black Lotus. I only found one listing of this card for sale. It sold on December 20th for $3,000. There are zero listed. Because all our Black Lotuses start at $10,000 or more for really heavily played unlimited ones. Collector edition, you're talking 5,000 were made. 5,000 of them. 
There is none for sale. How many got rebacked and destroyed? How many are lost and gone? $3,000 it sold for, and there hasn't been one for sale in over a month. Nothing's on the market that's collector edition in the Lotus, and the moxes are all low. Now, if you are looking to get into power, collector editions are a very viable way for you to get into the market without crippling your financial wallet. People do buy them, people do play with them. Okay, uh, again, because of that lack of supply of the other markets, a lot of people let you play with them, which is great. Uh, especially even for casual play, it's still a real magic card, which is the best part. And unlike the ones that said you can't play with um, uh, the championship ones and some of the other colors, people do let you play in these in tournaments sometimes, which is fantastic. So keep in mind, it's a very expensive card, and not every tournament lets you play with them, but it is a real magic card. It is very collectible. A lot of guys understayed these cards when they were cheap, and now they're realizing how expensive they've become. But seeing only one Black Lotus out there and it sold over, over a month ago and there's been nothing on the market since. It is crazy to me that it's that rare to find a collector edition Black Lotus now. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, out of all these, I'm just saying that all the cards were not made the same. Some are more desirable than others. We'll be going through this. I will keep tabs on cards as they go. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video tonight. Please leave the comments below. Love to hear what you guys think. Maybe some cards you think I missed out on. Put them in there. I'd love to hear about it. If you're new to the channel, again, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Thanks a lot for tuning in. This is MTG Moxman. Have yourselves a great night. It's crazy, I'm telling you. Crazy! Hey guys, big shout out to all my patrons, of course, who make everything possible. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is MTG Moxman. And yes, there's still a little room. On, there's a little bit of room, a little bit of room on my Patreon. So you can always join up. A couple of bucks will get you there. Have a great one.